Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In our last presentation, we introduced the concept of elasticity and provided a range of different measures of elasticity. In this presentation, we're going to look at an application of elasticity. The application is going to be quite simple. Suppose that the government sets a fixed higher price for wool farmers, as they did in Australia in the 1980s and 90s. Is that going to make farmers better off or worse off? How do we measure better off and worse off? We're going to be looking at the amount of money or the revenue that farmers make. And the key concept to answer that question is going to be the own price elasticity of demand for wool. Let's see how. We're going to be asking the question, do farmers make more or less revenue with price support? Just to give you the formal definition of revenue, it's simply the price that farmers receive times the quantity of wool that the farmers sell. We will start with our initial supply and demand curve diagram for wool. On the vertical axis we have the price of wool. On the horizontal axis we have the quantity of wool. We're going to start with our initial equilibrium, price of P0 and Q0. That's our equilibrium where the quantity of wool that buyers want to buy is equal to the quantity of wool that farmers wish to supply. We're going to look at a very simple price support scheme. It's going to be a scheme where the government sets a higher price for wool, but then simply leaves the quantity traded to the market. So the government isn't going to buy any of the excess supply, and we're going to assume that there's no black or illegal market. Farmers are simply going to sell the amount that they can legally sell with the price floor. So what happens? Here's our price for up here, it's price P1, which is above the original equilibrium price. At that higher price, buyers want to buy the quantity given by the demand curve. Sellers or farmers would like to produce and sell the quantity of wool given by the supply curve. They can't because there's voluntary trade, the short side of the market will rule, and so the actual amount of wool traded will be given by quantity Q1. We want to ask the simple question, does the amount of revenue that farmers earn go up or down after the wool price support scheme is put in place? The original amount of revenue is simply given by P0 times Q0, or it's given by this red shaded area shown on this diagram. After the wool price support scheme is put in place, farmers receive the price of P1, but only sell Q1 wool, so their revenue is given by P1 times Q1, which is given by the green shaded area on our diagram. So we want to know if the green shaded area is bigger or smaller than the red shaded area. So our basic question is, is P0 times Q0 the amount of revenue farmers receive before the price support scheme, is that bigger or smaller than P1 times Q1, the amount of revenue farmers receive after the price support scheme is put in place? And that's the same as asking the following question. Is the percentage rise in the price associated with the price support scheme, is the percentage rise in price from P0 to P1, is that bigger or smaller than the percentage fall in quantity when we go from Q0 to Q1. If a percentage rise in price is bigger than the percentage fall in quantity, revenue will go up. If the percentage rise in price is smaller than the percentage fall in quantity, revenue to farmers will go down. Let's look at our first case. Here I've drawn the demand curve as quite a steep line. In other words, a big change in price only leads to a relatively small change in quantity. Or in other words, once the price support comes in and the price rises from P0 to P1, that's going to lead to a fall in quantity, but the fall in quantity is going to be relatively small compared to the rise in price. This is a case that we call inelastic demand. If we look in terms of our own price elasticity of demand formula, what inelastic demand means is that the top bit 
of our own price elasticity of demand fraction is going to be relatively small compared to the bottom bit of the fraction. It will still be a negative number because quantity is falling whilst price is rising, but it will be a negative fraction. So, if the own price elasticity of demand for wool is between 0 and negative 1, that's going to mean that our percentage change in quantity is smaller than our percentage change in price, our percentage rise in price, and that means that revenue is going to rise for farmers. This is the case of inelastic demand. The own price elasticity of demand is a negative fraction, and that means that the farmer's original revenue, which is given by P0 times Q0, or the red shaded area, on the diagram, that that is going to be less than the farmer's revenue after the price support is put in place, P1 times Q1, which is the green shaded area on our diagram. Or equivalently, the money that farmers lose when the quantity drops from Q0 to Q1, which is this blue rectangle here, that area is going to be less than the amount of increased revenue that farmers get due to the price rise, which is this yellow shaded rectangle over here. So in summary, inelastic demand means that the own price elasticity of demand for wool is between 0 and negative 1, or in other words, the percentage fall in the quantity demanded is less than the percentage rise in the price, our demand curve is relatively steep as in this diagram and that means that farmers will get increased revenue when the wool price support scheme pushes the price of wool above the equilibrium price. Now remember economists often leave the negative sign off the own price elasticity of demand. So here I've just given you the same conclusion, but in absolute value terms. This is the way most economists would usually say it. If the own price elasticity of demand is less than 1, remember we're really talking about the absolute value here. If the absolute value of the own price elasticity of demand is less than 1, we call that inelastic demand, and a rise in price increases expenditure on the good. So that means that a price support scheme for wool farmers will lead to farmers making more revenue. Of course, the opposite is just going to happen if the percentage change in quantity when the price support scheme comes in is big compared to the percentage change in price, and I've drawn that on this diagram here. As drawn, the red area, P0 times Q0, which is the farmer's original revenue, that's going to be bigger than P1 times Q1, whoops, that's a bit better, which is simply the farmer's final revenue. So the revenue for farmers is going to go down in this situation. We call this situation the situation of elastic demand. The demand curve is relatively flat, or in other words, a small change in price leads to a big change in quantity, or in terms of our own price elasticity of demand formula, the own price elasticity of demand is going to be a number less than negative 1, or in absolute value terms, is going to be greater than positive 1. To see that, notice that our percentage change in quantity is big compared to our percentage change in price. So, if we think about this in absolute value, or positive number terms, our absolute value of our own price elasticity of demand is going to be greater than 1, because the top of the fraction is bigger than the bottom of the fraction. In that situation, a rise in price will lead to a fall in revenue for farmers. So here's our summary of this alternative situation. If the absolute value of the own price elasticity of the demand for wool is greater than 1, which is called elastic demand, then a rise in the price is going to reduce the expenditure on our good. So price support means that farmers will actually make less revenue.
So the key to answering our question, do farmers make more or less revenue with a price support scheme, can only be answered by understanding the own price elasticity of demand. If demand is inelastic, then the rise in price will lead to a relatively small drop in quantity, and so farmers will get more revenue. If the demand is elastic, the rise in price will lead to a relatively big fall in quantity, and farmers' revenue will fall. So, understanding elasticity of demand is critical to understanding the implications of government policy, in this case for farmers, but more generally whenever the government intervenes in a market. Talk to you next time.